Carla, thank you. Uh, Governor Rick Perry was in Sugar Land to speak to the Fort Bend Chamber of Commerce today when he heard the news of what happened here in Austin. Here's his reaction. You know, our hope is that uh, the days of flying aircraft into buildings or, or other structures is over, but you always have some exposure in a, in a free society. So, um, you know, the balance is finding how to protect the people and also protect their freedoms and liberties. Yeah. Whether it's uh, allowing ease of access into the state capitol. I hope we don't turn our capital into uh, DFW or uh, Bush International Airport from the standpoint of security that Texans still and visitors still have freedom to, uh, to come and go and don't feel like that they're being you know, inappropriately hassled. Um, but the other side of that is, is we have people's safety. And uh, so it, it is always a, uh, a battle between uh, anarchy and tyranny. <laughs> always has been. Thank you. Governor Perry reacting to the news. Uh, Thirteen people injured in this crash, two of those serious, and we have learned that one person was killed in this fire and crash. Josh Hinkle is following the latest on all of the victims. Josh? Well, Leslie, one of the reasons we had such a quick response from medical teams for those two serious victims was because the director of the ER for Seton Hospital Northwest was actually right here on this stretch of road, right in front of the building when the plane crashed. Now, we'll get back to that in just a moment, but first, I want to show you brand new video. Firefighters searching through the rubble on the second floor of the building. We know that they were looking for one of the people that was unaccounted for. We do know that one of those was a federal worker, the other, the body of the pilot. As you mentioned before, they did just discover a body. No word which person that is at this time. Now, the... Uh, honestly, I, I remember seeing the airplane. I looked down to make sure I wasn't going to crash into anyone. And then I looked up, and then there was an airplane that had disappeared, and there was a, a brief flash that lasted just very a second. And then there was a big puff of black smoke, a huge one, that went away within a few seconds. Uh, before everything caught fire, it was more of a, just like a flash of, of, of smoke. At that point, I took control of my car and uh, completed the, the overpass. And then I just parked right in front of the, in, right in front of the echelon building. I just, I guess that's what it's called. I sat there and just watched it kind of fall apart. Now that was the director of Seton Northwest Hospital ER uh, that I told you about earlier. He made that phone call, got the ER cleared for any traumas, but again, only two serious injuries. But as we told you before, crews were searching just a few minutes ago. They did discover a body, not uh, any word yet if that was the body of the pilot or if it was that other unaccounted federal worker. We are live in North Austin, John Schenkel, KXAN, Austin News. Thank you, Josh. Well, Jim Swift is up in Georgetown at the airport uh, where the pilot uh, uh, took off from with his single-engine plane. Let's get the latest from there. Jim? Leslie, as you can imagine, once it became clear that the uh, pilot that crashed into the Echelon building took off from the Georgetown airport at 944 this morning, of course, uh, folks descended. Uh, investigators descended on the site, FAA, FBI, Williamson County Sheriff, Georgetown Police Department, all assisting in the Austin Police Department investigation. Um, as that investigation continued, a suspicious package, as it was termed, uh, turned up in a, uh, in a hangar here, and at that point, an evacuation occurred. The road to the airport was closed. Uh, those on the airport grounds north of the terminal building were evacuated and uh, the rest of the afternoon was spent checking the place out. Uh, late this afternoon, the airport was reopened. At about uh, two minutes after 5 o'clock, the first planes took off. Uh, one just took off behind me a moment ago. Uh, there have been maybe a half a dozen flights in and out of the airport this afternoon. Uh, it is back operating and functioning. Uh, as far as the aircraft that uh, took off from here this morning, according to an FAA official, the tail number was N2889D an aircraft registered to a man named Joseph A. Stack. I'm at the airport in Georgetown, Jim Swift, KXAN, Austin News.
Good to see things are getting back to normal, at least there in Georgetown. Jim Swift, thank you for that live report. Well, there were just so many people who just happened to be in Northwest Austin this morning who dropped what they were doing to help out. One of those was Robin Dehaven, a 28-year-old who works for a glass company in Austin. But before that, he spent more than six years in the U.S. Army. He was driving on 360 this morning, going to a job, saw the plane go down, rushed into the burning building. He told us he got there before firefighters and used his ladder to help rescue five people trapped on the second floor. I climbed out onto the ledge and moved the ladder over to where it was stable on the side of the building and against that ledge, kind of leaning against the ledge, and then they started climbing out. The first was a, a woman, and then four gentlemen climbed out. And uh, the room was had smoke coming out the windows, and that whole the ceiling, a couple feet, it was filled with smoke. Of course, Robin used his glass expertise to help break out the glass there to get those people out without getting people uh, cut badly. And he also did two combat tours in Iraq, and he had experience there fighting fires.